The way the game is worked, I call it mix and match machines. Um, I'm going to call out a number of people and I'm going to tell them what they have to make. So I might say four people make a washing machine or three people make a grass cutter or seven people make an elephant or eight people make a letter of the alphabet. Anything I want, I can call out what it is, and there are, this is also listed on the PETA website and is on your handout of some suggestions to get you started, but the sky is the limit. Sometimes I do it based on a theme. So I might call two people make this, or four people call this, make this, or five people call this. And of course, I haven't even done the math. I don't even know how many people are in this room, how many ways you can divide this room into how many different things. So I might say two people call this and you look and you make this and you find that you're the leftover person. So you come to the partner finding area and you do it quickly. If you're four people make this you, and you can't find a foursome to join, you come quickly to the partner finding area. The reason you want to teach your class to come quickly to the partner finding area is that's how you as a teacher can quickly identify who the leftovers are. Maybe you needed four in a group and now there's three leftovers, they become a group of three. Maybe there's two leftovers and you assign them each to join a group and make that group not a group of four but a group of five. That's how you can just improvise. But you need to teach your class right from the start. And so that's why I do it on the first day. When it's a partner activity or a group activity, I tell you how many people to do it. It doesn't matter whether it's math or science or whatever, and you're supposed to find a partner or a group and you can't find them. Come quickly to the partner choosing area so other partners can find you too. You will have to do this really, really fast because you'll have like a minute to do it. Are we ready? So we're going out, there's a group of chairs, but it's not for this activity, so we're just gonna work around the chairs, it doesn't matter. So off into the hallway, please. Okay, getting back to what you noticed about the inclusivity, what do you find as a teacher yourself from doing that kind of activity? What would you be watching for? What would you be noticing when you were doing that? 
And amazingly, you're going to find that you notice the quieter encouragers. So one of the things you're wanting to teach your class is leadership. There's a variety of leadership skills. We tend to think of leaders as the person who is the boss, who has the ideas. But in fact, just as important leadership skills are the people who are inclusive, who are um, finding ways of getting the group working together, who are finding others. And you'll often find, if you watch, that you'll have some of those quiet, you have never thought of them as leaders, but they're providing the actual really important thing. There's cognitive leaders, like the person with the ideas, and there's group managing leaders. And both of those will show themselves up really quickly. Did you laugh while you did it? Yeah. Did you touch one another? What, were you particularly worried about whether you were with males or with females? No. And part of that reason is because you have to be able to do it so fast. So if you don't want to go through the year where you say, let's make a circle and you get all the girls on one side and all the boys on that side, play that kind of game really often because if they get used to touching one another, it breaks down barriers. For sure it does. And the earlier you do that, the better off you'll be. Okay. Cooperative group theory says that every time you're having the kids having to cr create some kind of a task that's more than just, you know, think, pair, share, something that's sort of spontaneous on the spot, where you're going to have kids working together in a social studies or science project or something, where they have to work together for several periods, it's really wise to invest a small amount of time first in having them to build a link with one another. And by doing that, this game to start with, you can draw on that anytime. Before you start your social studies project, you've got five new partners to work with. Make a letter of the alphabet. It can't just have straight lines or curves. You've got two minutes to do it. You had the kids working together and sharing ideas in a fun, non-threatening way for two minutes, and now they're ready to actually work together to do some kind of academic task. Um, what will happen is if you had a child who was anxious about the touching or about the participating, after a while of seeing this often enough, they'll probably start, I would think, involved in some of the non-threatening things. Since doing this every year in my class for 20 years, um, I notice that all through the year, the kids will say, as they're having a disagreement about something, an academic, the best way to do this social studies project, someone will say, there's more than one way to make a rocking chair. They say that because I say that a lot in the first month after we've played this. So there can be a difference. It doesn't have to be the same. Can we have different ideas? Can we find ways of incorporating other ideas? It's just a wonderful, powerful metaphor that you can build on all year.